Hello, Glenn. Hey, Hello. Frankie. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are in Holland. Yeah, freestyling part two. Mm. In the shadow of Hitler's bunker. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, probably not his bunker. <laughs> like, I don't think he ever got this far front. But um, yeah, we're in uh, Imauden or Imugen, however that it's. It starts with an I and then a J, so you know that whatever it's, you're not going to be able to pronounce it. I don't think the Dutch know how to pronounce stuff. They just run it that. There's like <laughs> fucking four J's and a K in there. You can't. Yeah. You can't have one set pronunciation. They just. <laughs> yeah. Know. The only way to not pronounce it is the way that we do it. That's the <laughs> only way they don't understand. What? What are you talking about? So we're going to go and see the bunkers today. I think, yeah. I suspect that might be dull. It's not. No. It's not because they're the real thing. Yeah. I think probably the Slayer graffiti is new. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Nazis. That's just your nickname. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually where Slayer got the idea from the band from. <laughs> yeah. And actually, thrash metal came from some of Mengele's tests <laughs> with the methamphetamine <laughs> at the time. Everybody run at the fence, and I'll record it. <laughs> good <laughs> yeah it's hey. a it's a trip though seeing them there because i've been here before um but uh all over the world this year or the last year i kept going to uh ruins i don't know i don't know what that says about me <laughs> your relationship <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, i want to show you where everybody died in pompeii yeah frozen in agony Ah, where do I get a t-shirt? <laughs> I got... Do you guys do fridge magnets or something? Because this is great. Uh, I went to Alcatraz when I was in um, San Francisco, and that is just... Like, it's a great tour, but it's just on this side of... You know, there was a lot of rapes here, don't you? <laughs> you know, like, you're going all around going... Uh, and this is where uh, Harvey the Bear got shivved. And <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, isn't there? If you could rape someone on that tour, you would be becoming a you'd be like a full stop to history. Do you know what I mean? You'd be you'd be adding to and finalizing a lot of rapes at that. Like farting at Auschwitz, man. Just <laughs> a little <laughs> and there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would anybody have the audacity to complain about <laughs> Come on! Oh, God! It really stinks in here. I gotta get some air. <laughs> Did any of these doors open? Let me climb on your shoulders. <laughs> Breathe through the brickwork. <laughs> God. But, you know, they, I, was, I was thinking that about those... Um, the the, uh, the bunkers is you know they are sort of the the ruins the last sort of standing ruins of the Nazis because you know they don't have they don't have any museums in uh, Germany <laughs> so to speak <laughs> no, they they do but they're in billionaires basements and no one <laughs> talks about it <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Is that brain in a jar trying to speak? <laughs> <laughs> no, ignore that, ignore that. It's yeah, yeah. He's just excited, excited to see you. Yeah, it feels, <laughs> it feels like you just have a... Do you have, do you have like a Hitler speech on low over a stereo system right now? Because I can just hear faint. <laughs> You handing out wolf tickets? You're a brain in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Smashing fucking Hitler's brain on the floor and then punching the fuck out of it. <laughs> We're just taking it to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to hate Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hitler's brain. We got a really big meeting with all of Hollywood's top executives. I mean, these are the guys that really sort of control everything, Hitler's brain. 
<laughs> so, you know, be cool. Be cool. I won't tell him whose brand you are. I'll just tell him that great idea you have for a sitcom. <laughs> it's just really great to come up with mainstream comedy hats. I yeah! Know, so I've learned how to get on really well. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of a lot of what he said is uh, it's all based on stereotypes. Where really, you know, <laughs> like a lot of sitcoms. If you take the hate and the flapping arms out of it, it's just like <laughs> they are like that. It's just this thing, brain. It's just this scene that bothers me where uh, my my cookie black neighbor, I kill him and throw him down the garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could coach his kid's ball team or something instead. Yeah. Sure, why not? Yeah. yeah. Why not? How about, you know, instead of the murders, pithy asides Hitler's brain. Actually, you know what? That might work. Okay, you, you try it over and, and then we'll shoot both teams. <laughs> what, uh, I, and then we take Hitler's brain to Israel and don't tell him what it is. <laughs> He's just like this is this is nice. <laughs> this is how you do something. If you don't like them, you, you make a big wall and you shoot rockets into this into them. What is it called again? What is this place? <laughs> put me up on top of the wall and pour a couple of martinis in here. <laughs> I want to enjoy the sunset. Are there rockets? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone's kind of fascinated with the Nazis. I think it's that thing of like how bad artists would be if you really gave them any power. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, why we hate scientists and technocrats or anything? Yeah, remember that time? Like, yeah. Artists take a crack at it. Yeah. I mean, the uniforms look nice, but I think any time somebody takes that much time on the uniform, that's when we we have to, <laughs> to have to step in. They hired who to do the costumes? <laughs> you go, boss. Yeah. No. And uh, that's where that never comes up in any of Hugo Boss's advertising. <laughs> but you know what? I fucking would. They were that good of suits. God, hey, just throw our hands in the air like uh, we we make we make the worst person in the world look good. Can you imagine what we could do for you? <laughs> Fanta as well, Fanta is um, Nazi Coke. Was it? You know they didn't have enough syrup uh, to make Coca Cola in Germany, so Coca Cola Company came up with uh, Fanta to, um, you know, give give the, uh, the Nazis their own cola branded beverage. Yeah, that was how nice a Coke. <laughs> 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 well, what isn't there a phrase? Didn't they have a, uh, I'd like to give the world a Coke. <laughs> so they were really stuck to that. Even during yeah. trying to stop fascism spreading across Europe, Coke was like, hey, the world. We said the world and we meant the world. Everybody gets a soda. We said Jeffrey Dahmer created fashion <laughs> up every week. <laughs> wash down his victims with some lovely, cool, refreshing Coca-Cola. Hey, go on, go on. Fanta? <laughs> hey, Fanta? Fanta? Three Fanta. <laughs> he was just fucking sh on a sugar high across fucking Central Europe about this. Yeah, well, maybe that was their, their, their that was their plan. Because if there's less syrup in it, we had the fucking edge. We were we were wired on full syrup coke, and maybe, they maybe they were looking for syrup. That's what it's like. <laughs> they got the bit, and they got all this syrup. The greedy bastards. <laughs> well, I thought about it the other day when I was watching a documentary about the early '90s, and. Uh, um, just about like I was going back to place myself at that time, you know, like you would if you, um, and you sort of imagine what the fashion was like, and it was just non fashion, it was just like entirely homogenous. Like <laughs> nobody did anything different baseball hat, t shirt, jeans, you yeah. know, yeah, the, the you know, and it was generally. 
uh, the t-shirt was something branded that you purchased. Like a Pepsi shirt that you paid 15 bucks for. Or Raybok. Or a D, or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. But just uh, a really strange thing of, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't mind being ads. Well, I think branding is a fucking, like, trading places style joke. Among the heads of the corporations, I bet I can get you to wear fuck on your cap. You know, I get just a stupid fuck. There you go, right on his fucking head. We'll call it a brand. Brandy's fucking cattle. You know, I bet you go, okay, a dollar. <laughs> Literally that. I think there's like fucking so much, there's that thing of, you know, people are actually so homogenous now that they disagree with each other to try and make themselves seem different. Because <laughs> everyone, we're all just a big lump of fucking grey jelly. We watch fucking Breaking Bad and we fucking go to the same movies and we fucking feel the same about them and we fucking have enmities to try and fucking give ourselves some kind of... And you're just like, you cunts will all have the same fucking serial number in the camps. You will all be loaded into the same fucking van. They're not going to have the exact same serial number, or there's just no reason to give them to them, frankly. <laughs> no, it'll be a worldview serial number. <laughs> yeah, you'll be, be like in fucking, the grouping of yeah. 19-428. I mean, the back of a van with fucking Stuart Lee, and he's like, what does this mean? <laughs> a millionaire socialist, I'm guessing. It's just you and me. <laughs> where it fucking enforces childlike behaviour being famous doesn't it because people are performing for parental attention and you're like yeah look at look at the way that people we weigh up celebrities we we obsess about their fucking body shape changes just like you would with your kid uh, we fucking oh we get upset when they're upset and you know <clears throat> we fancy some of them you know <laughs> it's all there <laughs> <laughs> George Michael, man, fucking Andrew Ridgely left Wham and became a, a racing driver. You know, like a fucking full on racing, never, not, never having been a racing driver. And fucking George Michael got involved in more car crashes. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, man. <laughs> that was the full on weirdest story. That was like, like Illuminati making you do something to send a signal to Slovenia to do, you know, like, if George Michael ever jumps out of a moving car on the M1, then you have to activate Agent 47. It was like fucking a random news generator. It was like fucking... <laughs> that just crashed a hot air balloon into a sea line enclosure. No, George Michael, it's Commander Roll. <laughs> The fucking the police, you know the police must have turned up just thinking, like, what the fuck went, what, what the fuck, and they just saw him, and all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, and they fucking scrunched up the paperwork. Yeah. All right, okay. I can well, see what I'm doing. It, like, and, and also, like, because it closed the M1, and like, <laughs> like, nobody, so, like, is it like Glastonbury where the fucking rumors of what happened are filtering back through the lineup, like the fucking 20 mile tailback? <laughs> by, by Chinese whispers, by the time it got back, it would have actually been something rational. It's like, <laughs> a flat tire on a, a lower load of pipes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a. It was a it was actually uh, a test um, funded by the Chinese Whispers Institute <laughs> to see what would happen if the most ludicrous thing in the world happened. And then they're at the back, like with the 20 mile pit, pit, tailback in white coats, going, Okay, now what do you think has just happened up there? There's a Chinese guy whispered it to me. <laughs> he thinks the test went brilliant. <laughs> Is that why that's called that? Because if a Chinese guy whispered something to you, you wouldn't understand it? Or if you whispered it all across China? Fuck knows. 
know. We don't know. We two people who don't know. <laughs> Let's pull our ignorance. <laughs> Maybe it was called something totally different. But by the time it got to the naming person, it got to <laughs> so many different people. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's got a totally scientific <laughs> name. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I can remember the game not working in Canada. Okay. Like, I think it was sort of set up like, we're going to show you kids what life's like here. And we were all just such good kids. Just... <laughs> Politely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Could you repeat that? <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> no, it actually, uh, it, they, they started it. And at the end, it was in French. <laughs> <laughs> an apology. <laughs> it was an apology in French. <laughs> an all-purpose apology. <laughs> <laughs> I would never have thought before I went to Canada that it was such a fucking nation of wieners. <laughs> it's just coming from Scotland. I think that's it, man. It's like, it's like someone tickling a rape victim. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you go for the actual study, it's a fucking nice. <laughs> the Apple always likes Scotland. So Yeah, that's <laughs> you can go there and uh, get your uh, get your negative on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like the fucking uh, what was it, the five minutes hate in 1984, or two minutes here, whatever it is. The amount of times people, like friends of mine from Australia or whatever, are like, what are those two guys arguing about? And you're like, they're not arguing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I walked into a class meet in, in um, Cambridge, and it was hard because I wasn't ready. <laughs> <laughs> like Houdini when he got punched in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tense up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Houdini would ever have made a claim as wild as I could understand the glass region anywhere at any time. <laughs> it would have killed him long before the punch in the stomach did. But we were uh, we were talking and um, he, said, he kept saying things and I had to lean in because I just wasn't ready to hear it. And uh, that's when I realized I don't think you have a strong accent. I think you do it on purpose. To try to entice people into the headbutt zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so lean in and listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. I'll smack you in the heat. Plump. <laughs> Just a really crisp RP accent as they're phoning you an ambulance. Yes, it's happened again. <laughs> I don't know why I do it. <laughs> Did you see uh, there, there was a thing on the cricket the other day? Sir Ian Botham made the claim that seven out of ten men are colorblind. <laughs> are you still using Google? I'm using Wiggle. You're not moving over to Wiggle. Ninety-five percent of people are using it now. Just check. And then, the, like it's and it's it's taking place in what is what some people are calling the best cricket match ever. It was really good. You never knew which way it was going to go. And they kind of had to break into the cricket match because all of the commentators were laughing so hard. <laughs> Ian ended up getting subbed out of the cricket thing. He had to still sit in the commentary booth looking around. Not, not like just like... What have I done? What have I done? I just, I made a ludicrous statement. I stood behind it and they, they threw him a bone because he looked, he looked like a dog who'd shat in the house. <laughs> and apparently what he was trying to say was uh, men are 70% more likely to be colorblind than women. Maybe they just he'll still be on contract and they'll have to fucking move him out to like a late night nature documentary where he can't do any harm and he's just fucking telling <laughs> wild claims about sparrows. It turns out he's color blind and he thinks like sparrows are a, a vibrant sort of magenta. <laughs> <laughs> he's just describing this palette of like alien colours. Yeah, he's just trying to cover it up. 
That was his whole ploy in the cricket was to introduce this militant uh, colour blind philosophy <laughs> so that we'd all start seeing ourselves as colour blind. <laughs> you know, colour blind people are right. <laughs> yeah, everything's a dull grey, we're just dysfunctional. <laughs> You're, um, you're imposing colours on these things. They <laughs> actually have no colours. It's pretty much what our fucking political system is. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> the whole population going, it's all a bit like this, isn't it? And then some people go, no, no, I think you'll find. Even <laughs> if both of them gets, like, gets to do these nature documentaries and they take him to, like, they're, they're all huge hits and he goes to, like, the most colourful part of the rainforest and makes a documentary series in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Ten week epic. <laughs> Look at this beautiful s- snake, yeah. <laughs> or possibly just a vine. <laughs> Ow! Snake. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the internet has changed that, and that you know, just fact checking now is just immediate. You can make a wild claim and. <laughs> It's automatically known. Like it used to take at least a trip to the library to find out that a guy was a fucking idiot. <laughs> and then you'd have to go back down to the pub and go, No, I looked in the book and that's not it doesn't stop people though. I mean you think it'd stop it you think it would engender a bit of caution, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're now um you're now listening to somebody who's ignoring the fact that there's a big World Wide Web that they can be fact checked. Well, they're the grandchildren of the people who were fucking built for war. So every generation they've had to get us to fucking charge pillboxes like those. Right? So they're just like fucking. So they're doing now. They're just charging the fucking pillboxes. <laughs> <with us, isn't laughs> <it? Yeah. laughs> YouTube comments. That's just the fucking Omaha Beach man of. <laughs> You can yeah. Google it. You can Google it. <laughs> I've ever tell you about that idea I had for a telly show that was like put all these fat people in a house with a really thin door and uh, they've got to lose weight until one of them can squeeze out. But you fucking make all the furniture out of like cake and shit. <laughs> Chocolate kettle. <laughs> It would go on for like five years. <laughs> but just like um, little incentives, like the bathroom door is like, <laughs> like that's that's how they get rights in the house is just to be slim enough to get into like, <laughs> like the good bathroom. <laughs> you know, not just a fucking plank with a hole in it. The toilet's made of like fucking uh, wicker or something, so it might, if they go like pound over it, might just fucking collapse and they're all just fucking shit in a bit. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading some really good novels when I was away, and I was just like, fuck, this just blows stand up out of the water. There's just nobody putting this much thought into it, you know? Yeah. Maybe you could, but then fucking, why, why would you? If you were fucking, why the fuck would. You know, Thomas Pynchon or fucking James Elroy or, or Grant Morrison or someone go, if only I had the restriction of having to get three laughs a minute, I could, <laughs> then I could really... And why would a novelist go, would there be a way that I could speak my novel every night? <laughs> or, here's the crazy thing I had, why don't I write it down and you fucking read it? How can we make sure that everyone that reads this is drunk? That's the... <laughs> my first question here. There's that whole fucking pretense with comedy as well, like you've just leapt out and screamed it in their face from a bush. For some reason, it's that, I heard his goddamn joke and I didn't watch, I was just switching over the TV. And you're like, no, you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> you were fucking watching it just waiting to be horrified. <laughs> what is that thing, though, isn't it, of like... You, you, what they really mean is you can't say it in public and so it's what's allowed in public discourse and what, why is there a problem with saying things in public it's because we, we like to look at the language people use in public as a way of judging what class they come from you know, it's a way of drawing a circle around all the good people 
which is fucking childish. So if you go, like anyone that uses the word retard must hate the disabled. No, they don't. You know, lots of people would use that word because they fucking are the sort of people who didn't get your fucking memo, <laughs> right? <laughs> that a word they regularly used at school is fucking now the worst thing they could say. Well, you know what the funny thing about the word retarded is? Um, the... Uh, it, it wasn't retarded before that like people go there's many other words you can use like idiot dunce cretin which guess what yeah we're all that definition. means retarded yeah and uh, overuse of the time um, you know they just came to mean idiot so the fact that you're trying to stall the word retarded is retarded. <laughs> it's the fucking definition of retarded. <laughs> like, it's it's stalled. The only part, like you look like are the fucking signs in the French uh, in the in the train station are they illegal too? Because the trains are retarded there. My thing is, if you want to fucking find reasons to elevate yourself above above other people, go and fucking earn it. Don't fucking just sit about <laughs> fucking picking things out of the paper with a pen. So whatever fucking Ricky Gervais, I don't know why the fuck he said that, right? And it was pointless. But like, there's some fucking article where some woman goes, well, you know, he's a fucking moron for uh, using the word Mongo, and I don't have to explain why I... Uh, can use more on it and he can't use it. And I'm like, no, you do have to explain, unless you're fucking Judge Dredd. Right? <laughs> I am the law! I'm saying the same fucking thing, but it's okay. <laughs> you know? I used to like the old cop shows where uh, they'd want to deal with the drug, but they'd have to make one up because they can't <laughs> say heroin at 8 o'clock on television. <laughs> This kid's all hopped up on Majestic. <laughs> <laughs> like weird ways of getting it in this. You mean Cranklin? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's been eye dropping it onto his teeth all night. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look like a GNU officer. Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> or when they, they, they sometimes would show. Like the the people in the cells coming off of majestic are like ah! Sometimes their head explodes, sometimes it doesn't. That's the worry about majestic. Your kids could be on it right now, America. I stopped. did you ever see I that? took it twice and now I'm gay and I'm fifty. <laughs> Viva Knievel, yeah, yeah. When uh, Gene, uh, who's the guy sings singing in the rain? Uh, Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly, in one of his last movie roles, plays Evil Knievel's right hand man, and they they spike him with majestic or whatever it is. I don't even think they say what drug it is or how it's caused him to do this, but they've got him in an insane asylum in uh, in Mexico. <laughs> And he's he's looping out in this room, and he fucking he fall. I can't remember how he works it out, but he he kind of rides his motorcycle into the insane asylum, bursts through Gene Kelly's door, puts him on the back, and shoots up the fucking wall. <laughs> My lord, like if you were hopped up on Majestic and Evil can evil burst through like Oh Jesus! Is that you? It's probably all the locations that Evil Can Evil could get for free after his like painkiller binges, he's like, Oh I know an insane asylum in Mexico. <laughs> I wanted a card game. <laughs> I have a feeling too, uh, Evil pretty much had to live in Mexico to get those at the price that he needed. The, the, you want to talk about margins working, do you know how much Evil can Evil pay in painkillers? <laughs> he actually owned a factory, and he sat at the end of it like fucking Lucy from I Love Lucy in the chocolate scene, just watching painkillers go by in the little thing. Where's the bike? Where? <laughs> 
Maybe like drug dealers in Amsterdam can only get high from knowing they've given someone else the drugs to tip them into schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> it's my one joy in life. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what Mr. Ben is? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he was like a fucking, he wasn't a tailor that did, he was like a fucking drug dealer. Yeah, you'll be an astronaut. <laughs> Caveman, here you go. Maybe it was just like the fucking paedophile thing in the 70s. Mr. Brown just had to keep fucking changing outfits. <laughs> they went ahead of the fucking cops, man. <laughs> I couldn't have fucked a kid in, as a knight. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch telly at all now. I watch Breaking Bad and like Mad Men. It's always like these things are about... See, Mad Men, I think it's brilliant. It's so much fucking thought gone into it. And I do love it. But you're kind of like, why is it about Mad Men? I bet you Mad Men has changed the advertising world for the worse. (laughs) There's probably fucking 19 douches out there in Don Draper suits with their hair slicked back. (laughs) Trying to fucking command a room with their manly presence. It's just like, dude, come on. Yeah. First of all, you're drunk. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, like, even he's got a drinking problem in the 60s, so <laughs> knock this fucking whiskey sour shit on the head. It's 11 in the morning and you just puked. Don, this is the cancer talking. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you, <clears throat> you can't imagine them doing a show about anything super relevant it was like that big budget do you know what I mean she sort of think you know Noam Chomsky always goes on about America's medium term planners you know uh, they, they've got these medium term goals and, you know it's just secure resources other people's resources all this kind of stuff and you're like fuck do a show about them what were they up to in the 60s and the 70s and yeah. start with fucking putting the shine in well just, and, uh, I'd love to see a show start with um uh, Eisenhower's speech about the military industrial complex. Yeah, yeah. It's chilling warning to America going, this is why this is happening. It's going to continue to happen. Uh, and because he's the fucking president, they can't cut him off. But uh, <laughs> holy shit. And then the theme music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. If I can imagine a TV drama where the Ayatollah Khomeini was like a regular character. <laughs> <laughs> Give him like quite a lot of funny lights. Yes, he kind of kind of breaks in the room Kramer style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta redo that with my hat up. <laughs> See, the comedy here, Ayatollah, is that everybody else is French. You know, <laughs> Paris. You're a fish out of water. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just staring at a roll of toilet paper. I don't. What? No, where's the ass gun? <laughs> Evil Knievel turns up and fucking rescues him. <laughs> uh, we've got um, the church are going to fucking uh, take on Wonga. Yeah, because Jesus. realized they could do that with a memo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, send this down to the fourth floor. <laughs> Apparently, we don't like what you do down here. <laughs> How should we change it? I don't know. Change the name. Change something. Well, Jesus had no trouble with uh, money lenders. Oh, he's a bad. They used to pick their tables up and shake them in the air. It's such a big. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's the strangest thing about Jesus. Uh, everything he did, barring the miracles, which I don't think he did. Everything he did and say, just wonderful. What a great guy. What a wonderful, wonderful cat. Never really. Now, of course, the Bible's not a diary, so we don't know how he behaved on the other days. But the, uh, the things that he said and the things that he did and what that turned into. Like, like if, you, if you knew, like, like you, look, you look at what the church is now getting up to and you're just like, how did you get... From there to there. Well, maybe it's like, um, maybe it's just that his real message is nobody listens to anything. (laughs) 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 
It's just presented it in a very convoluted way. Maybe Jesus' fucking message is like an abstract thing, right? So really, he's just going by his story. He's trying to say one in 12 people is a cunt. <laughs> you know? Less than you'd think. <laughs> Chin up. Just like someone really boring wrote the Gospels and all the apostles could turn into their different astrological signs. No, did no one mention that? Or oh, the adventures we had? I turned into a lion. I <laughs> thought I clouded the story. I just thought I'd leave it out. Judas died from cancer. I mean, <laughs> you've portrayed him horribly. I just had to get him out of there with that bum and everybody out. Crazy man. Fucking awesome. <laughs> like, and that has to show, uh, like, how did that not show a fallible God? Made a woman, didn't do it right. <laughs> like, hold on a second. He just <laughs> fucked that up. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> so I, I, I took that guy's rib and I made another one. So he fucked himself, really. <laughs> In many ways. You know, a little bit about genetics. <laughs> <laughs> Which I clearly don't. <laughs> yeah, fucking your own rib. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a name, baby. I'm gonna play you like a xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to play her off against the other ribs. <laughs> 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 You do a lot for me, baby, but you're not holding my kidneys in. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adam. I tried to be better, honey. <laughs> that was an abused rib you had in that joke, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to dub over a more confident woman like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have to hold your rib in. Why don't you I don't have to hold your kidney in? Why don't you hold your own kidney in? Time to emancipate the skeleton. How many other things could we have made? Because was it just women? Could we, could we have made a third sex out of our fucking skulls? Or? <laughs> we'll never know, because they stopped doing it. I've never understood. I think, right, I think love is a, maybe a hormonal or psychological response or even evolutionary a a agent to getting through the problems that there will necessarily be to being with someone. So it's, oh, you live 40 miles away and blah, blah, blah. So love kicks in. So it's like, so that you can be together long enough to bring up a kid or have a kid or whatever, you know? And when you've not got that, do you know what I mean? And I've got that thing now where I don't need to make a living and, I, you know, I don't have any particular fucking... Uh, Hassles if I, if I met someone I wanted to be with, it's really fucking hard to fall in love with anyone. Just like, yeah, there's like five of them. You <laughs> <laughs> just bang them all. And, you know. <laughs> like God sort them out. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> not the right uh, phrase, no. <laughs> yeah. Hitler's brain. What do you. <laughs> why do I take you on these dates? <laughs> Shave her head. Hitler's brain! She's not gonna be into it! <laughs> clean the fucking jar again. <laughs> or just get an algae eater. <laughs> Circle the jar. Take it, sucking down Hitler's brain spunk, making it one of the weirder fish you've ever talked to. This little castle could have some uh, machine guns on targets. <laughs> The corner that I can't help but notice would be good for a camp. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Burton is trying to escape from a little castle on a ski lift. <laughs> you get the fish net? Get it, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're tired.
tiny little Richard Burton <laughs> that you've got to fucking then deal with. Yeah. He's criticised all yeah, the fucking brain, hours. powers do you have? <laughs> Tiny Richard Burton on my hands now, <laughs> and he just drank a real bottle of whiskey. <laughs> he drank a me-sized bottle of whiskey, and he's one inch tall. <laughs> okay, Richard Burton, I know how much you hate the Sandler screenplay. It's really not aimed at you. <laughs> I'm telling you, Richard, we can cheat this on cameras. Nowadays, you're you are back in the game. We're gonna put you on high def. <laughs> I could be Sandler's grandfather. So uh, today, as we record, there's this profound smell of shit in the corridor, and you think... I'm going with dead guy. You think it's a dead guy? I got, uh, and I've got, um, I got the, uh, I've got the ways and means to back this up. Now, first of all, which dead guy do we think it is? I think it's the naked guy from behind the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> we, went, we went on a walk behind uh, the Nazi bunkers, and we saw a naked dude drinking. But passed out. Yeah. Passed out in the sun, pink as a goddamn lobster. Yeah. So maybe he was staying here. He's yeah, that's up. what I think. That's uh, that's what he's into. He likes to go around the bunkers, get a little <laughs> little nude drinking behind the bunkers. It's caught up with him. You can't fucking do that forever. No. Yeah. Fucking. I don't even think once. <laughs> 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 It's like someone has just pumped a bellows full of shit <laughs> over this corridor. <laughs> Whatever the fuck was in him. I mean, they're dead and, you know. An episode of Euro Bunker drinking ends halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking silent credits over it on the Discovery Channel. <laughs> I think he was like a, he was probably a rapist like two years ago. And like it's taking its toll now the most he can do is just fucking lie naked in a, a coma somewhere and hope that someone sees him that's or he's been raping bunkers <laughs> <laughs> he's on such a cocktail of methamphetamine and angel dust <laughs> It's, he's usually dressed in American 1940s military garb when he does it. <laughs> Captain America. Fucking <laughs> chill. Or he's drunk Hulk. You know, you remember Hulk used to wake up without any clothes on because he'd grown so big? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes... Sometimes Hulk drinks when he gets like that too. <laughs> oh, have you ever seen Hulk when he's been drinking whiskey? Oh, he turns red. That's the other thing. And just argues. <laughs> Hulk was definitely written by someone whose dad was an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> he goes crazy, he wakes up naked. <laughs> and, and when he's like that, he looks nothing like me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> really just wishing his father away. <laughs> like if he'd drawn that cartoon in therapy, they wouldn't have let him out of the facility. <laughs> yeah, son, I don't I think I think till you start making Hulk look like your dad, you're not you're not coming off these bills. I'm gonna break out of here and fuck a bunker. See how you like that? <laughs> It's just weird though, like, um, are you, uh, there's, it really is a little slice of heaven down here, and um, just to find yourself in that predicament, of, you know, you could have rented a bicycle, gone to the beach, had a nice The beach cream. is like five minutes away from where he'd fucking passed out on. Yeah. At least pass out on the fucking beach. 
No, no, against the fucking monument to evil. <laughs> and and round, round the back where people have been pissing. <laughs> yeah. The shopping centre would be better than a fucking <laughs> monument to fucking Nazi Germany. <laughs> <laughs> What's the opposite of scenic? <laughs> That's what I want to put up. And there was a thing too. He was using it to blot out some of the nicest scenery on a <laughs> lovely day. Oh, come get some shade back here. Ah, ah, the piss. There it is. You can't smell it in any other spot. You really gotta nestle in behind the Nazi bunker. And not only have we been pissing behind, Nazis have been pissing behind there since the 40s. People have just fucking pissed and shit. Right behind the bunker, and that's where nude man nestles. <laughs> A ley line of depravity. <laughs> I placed it all the way here. <laughs> I've eaten um, far too many eggs. That's yeah. That's another thing that's happened. So, it might be good that we're down the hall from where a dead guy is. <laughs> I might go have to fart in his room. <laughs> might have to claim he's a serial killer on the loose. <laughs> Their national thing, like they have it with every coffee, is a waffle. Have you ever had one of those? Is that like a, f- a nugget? Oh, it's, well, it's, first of all, it sounds like it used to fight the... Allied forces. <laughs> it's a fucking the Nazi superhero. Still far full with his spear of destiny. Holding <laughs> them off with his fucking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gotta develop our own struffle. We're getting our ass kicked over here. <laughs> we were talking yesterday about um, fucking it. You know, Zimmerman and the American right to bear arms and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Now, here's the question I hold. Why are not, why are Americans not legally allowed to own nuclear weapons if they have the right to bear arms? There's yeah. one for you. They should bear any arms. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it's, it's not in gun form, isn't it? If they could get a nuclear gun, <laughs> a nuclear pistol. <laughs> fucking... They went, man. They just did. Someone's taken out a fucking t- school and t- town in Ohio. <laughs> yeah. In uh, what is deemed a hunting accident. <laughs> yeah. I, I use it for grouse. <laughs> I, li- I like to hunt grouse. And I'm not a good shot. <laughs> not at all. I drink and I shake. So I need a nuclear pistol. I have a condition. I'm an alcoholic. It's a disease. And I shake a lot in the morning, so I need my nuclear... I've missed! I've missed before with a nuclear pistol! <laughs> you know how embarrassing it is to see Akron go up in, in a mushroom <laughs> cloud and see the grouse flutter away in the distance? <laughs> this thing isn't there in economics. Sometimes we think... They always talk about growth. Let's grow. We need to grow, grow, grow. And you're like, there's no one ever says, "What are we growing towards?" You know, that's a pretty incredible attitude that no one ever goes, "Let's grow so that we we, we can, let's grow, growy grow." That's pretty much the explanation. You're like, this like this is how cancer would talk. <laughs> <laughs> the BBC economics editor, you're just like, if a, if a tumor. <laughs> Could fucking write. It would fucking pound us out, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah, go, 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 go. <laughs> Until the host organism dies. Do you know there's a rule? Uh, the uh, cocaine possession is um, it's a different charge in the city of London. Uh, it's a lesser charge. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not even a restable offence. It's uh, it's summonable. But uh, it is it is absolutely a different charge, uh, and the reason they say is because uh, it's so prevalent that you could shut down the city of London, therefore the financial section of uh, Britain, and you could you could really do damage to it if if you were allowed to arrest all the people who had cocaine on them, never once acknowledging that that is a 
horrible way to run a financial section of your country. Like, oh, they're all really coked up. <laughs> they're really, really high on a drug that uh, you shouldn't really be around money. <laughs> you know, like, like that was that was their like, hey, come on, we don't want to shut this down. No, shut it down. Get them off coke. They need them to have confidence. Don't they? It's like, <laughs> this doesn't really exist. <laughs> Let's all keep fucking smiling and yeah. bed. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes you lie. <laughs> right at the end of it all, it makes you a big fat liar. <laughs> uh, and that's who you think would do well around the money? A bragging liar? <laughs> Who needs cash? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they've said uh, there, there's been uh, theories about uh, that's how uh, the last financial crisis um, got to such a point. Uh, there was higher grade cocaine came in. Uh, you reckon the market's a bear or a bull today? Is it a bear or is it a bull? <laughs> oh. It's both, man. It's me. It's the bear and the bull. It's a bull with a bear's head. Yeah. <laughs> it's a horned bear. <laughs> to a certain extent, it's a horned bear that's also my relationship with my father. But let's put that to one side. <laughs> yeah. No. Horny bear. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Horny bear, horny bear, daddy. Now I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take the costume off, daddy. Yeah. I feel no that's shame. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's a CB handle now. Uh, <laughs> That was so fucked up, man. CB radio, kids in sheds talking to truckers. <laughs> <laughs> it's little duck here, horny bear. The horny bear's been on the road a long time. <laughs> you got a back alley to that house? Something they could have somewhere? <laughs> yeah, I, how that has not turned into a Catholic priest style fucking blowing the lid off of what the truckers were up to in the <laughs> It's fucking like Catholic Church and Teamsters together, man. They probably were working a whole fucking. There's probably priests on CB radios talking in fucking Latin to each other, man. <laughs> or maybe it was just all priests driving trucks around, <laughs> talking <laughs> like truckers finding kids. <laughs> How creepy was Latin that they knew a language that no other fucker knew that speaking code? <laughs> That's an idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you know, uh, that's how he knew there was a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they used to do all the masses in Latin. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the reason they did that is because they started to see some huge gaps in logic in the Bible that even back then people would go, whoa, wait a second. So <laughs> they just fucking, they, they just would show up and go, okay, we're all Christians. And we'll now read to you from the Bible. Don't worry. It's a good story. So let Dominic does Dominic talk about Oh, church is great. And these wooden seats. Whoa, so calm. Oh, now I'm kneeling. Ah, yeah. Well, it was a lot to do with their thing if they were the line to God. So that must be, used to be a much bigger thing. Even when I was a kid, that thing of the priest is your... Your intermediary with God, and the Pope is the main intermediary, and he fucking talks to God and all that stuff. And then, um, was it me and you were talking about this? That fucking um, maybe priests aren't even into pedophilia, it's God can feel it through them. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you know, the, you know, the Pope goes in and fucking read that secret thing uh, from Medagogy or whatever, it is. yeah, and uh, he goes to read that after he's, after he's uh, appointed, and he always comes out fucking ashen faced. That's the story, you know. And uh, it's probably that. It's probably the the secret is that we are ruled by a paedophile god who wants to turn Earth into a fucking rape camp. Malevolent <laughs> 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 yeah, paedophile god. Oh, that was worse than I thought. And I'm embracing myself. God talks to the man just like a fucking sparrow lands on fucking Francis of Assisi's finger and fucking good more tongue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God. But just sort of <laughs> points his finger to the one he likes. <laughs> yeah. A couple crows kind of drag him over. I said, little children should come to me and suffer. Why do I always get misquoted? <laughs> <laughs> the 
drag him over like Snow White. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Bambi's nose and a fucking kid's legs apart. Yeah. <laughs> Wakes up and the fucking elephants carry him to an orphanage. My <laughs> <laughs> <Like>, God. Uh... <laughs> What's that, Lassie? <laughs> Kids be trapped under a tree trunk, okay. Oh. <laughs> you want me to live the tree? Oh no, Lassie! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Let me get the tree off him. For- oh. Alright! <laughs> You're the boss! <laughs> yeah, uh, I just think it's ridiculous the whole. Um, the whole idea of appropriate and inappropriate humor because uh, no one controls what makes them laugh, you know? Mm-hmm. So if you say, oh, you can't make jokes about this, what you're saying is that, you know, that's not funny. Oh, you've decided that for everyone. Well, thank you. What else can't we laugh at? What, what else doesn't make me laugh? You have responded incorrectly. <laughs> and also, you get that fucking... Uh, even when you do it in a theater to two thousand people, <laughs> they will laugh. <laughs> they will go, "You can't say that," and you're like, "I just have." <laughs> you didn't mind. You're talking about some mythical other of, and what they really mean is the press. They go, "Oh, the press will get a hold of that," and and you know that's what they mean. Yeah. Their their opinion counts less than some mythical public opinion. And the reason the idea of public opinion is tolerated is because the public have no fucking say in what public opinion is. Public opinion is created by fucking Rupert Murdoch. If you were a member of the public trying to influence public opinion, you're sending a fucking letter to the sun or fucking tweeting to a hundred fucking porn bots. Or you've got no say in, you know, they come out and go, the public are outraged by <laughs> like, no, you, you, and you're not even outraged. You're doing it as a fucking excuse to print the fucking joke. Well, yeah, yeah. And just fucking bored in an office. Uh, did, uh, did anything happen today? Well, uh, yeah, I guess. Somebody made a joke and some other people laughed. Ooh, stop the press! <laughs> it's like, it's not like fucking George Clooney made a rape joke. It's like, it's like <laughs> that fucking rape joke guy. <laughs> Did the rape joke. Yeah, really inappropriate. I don't know. <laughs> He did it at James Gandolfini's wake. <laughs> Horrible eye contact with his wife. Oh. <laughs> it's a thing. There's always one single woman at a wake. <laughs> That's why I go. <laughs> you can't beat grief sex, and let's be honest, all sex is grief sex. <laughs> Which is sort of the thrust of George's joke. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the, the whole thing of like, um, oh, but, you know, whatever percentage, one in five, some people say women have been sexually assaulted. You know, how many people are affected by cancer? That's everything, isn't it? Yeah. And it's like, also, if it's just happened, you shouldn't be bringing them to a comedy show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the worst. You're, you're asking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like fucking... The Patch Adams of fucking the report. I <laughs> 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 uh, pulled out the wrong crop there. Mistletoe. Sorry. Hit your morphine. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I thought you were doing Patch Adams. No. Is this on? <laughs> Tough crowd. It's easier on the chemo ward. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you can do it early and late with chemo for where, you know? Yeah, they got a lot of new people coming in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't have to write so many new, new <laughs> Well, here's the other thing, too. Um, I, I watched a whole uh, two-hour Oprah special on just some depraved shit. I can't remember what it was, but the dad was... He was raping everyone. The, the daughters, the wife, eventually the son. He just raped everyone in the family. He was really on a roll. Uh, and of course, that's fine for Oprah to talk about that for two hours. Yeah. A two hour rape talk. And, uh, and the only difference I would say is that Oprah sells advertising Yeah. in the middle of a rape talk. Yeah. You know, why is that never like, uh, do you really 
Is that really something that you should advertise in the middle of? I gotta make money, but I'm just bringing it. I, I'm telling people what it's, what's going on. Yeah. yeah, fuck, man. I had that in the. Um, uh, I've, I've had that where people go, oh, you do um, uh, stuff about, you know, whatever fucking sex subject, right? And like, yeah, I do a fucking line about it. Like, nobody comes to your show to see a joke about Madeleine McCann. You put her on the fucking front page of your paper because you know that fucking sales go up 20% every time you fucking claim there's been a sighting yeah. of her. A naked guy behind a bunker says he saw Madeleine McCann in the clouds. <laughs> uh, I said this to a guy once after a show because I, I had a mustache montage in one of my shows where... Just famous people. I, I had a picture of myself and famous people with mustaches used to spin out of it and can come back in and uh, all to the beat of perfect circles. Uh, you march like lambs to the rhythm of the war drum. Uh, and <laughs> okay, that's a, that's an interesting band. I'm sorry I missed that, man. <laughs> yeah, that's on the net. You can right. find it. Um, cool. It was just like a start to the show. Like, I uh, just, you know... Lights go down and <laughs> and uh, yeah, people loved it or hated it. Uh, <laughs> but one of the pictures, uh, like right in the uh, right, like the song sort of has this big fucking bit in the middle of it. A... And uh, I didn't. It wasn't my idea. The guy who made the thing did it and I told him, he's like I, we can take it out but I think it's worthy and I was like you gotta fucking leave that in in the middle and this was the summer that it was going on uh, the bit like the song going up to this big fucking and then it stops and it's the um, the piano from everything I do I do for you and Maddie span out of my <laughs> fucking mustache and just sort of stayed there for a bit and then spins back in go back to sleep and another fucking mustache people would come out of my mustache and uh <laughs> it, like, I, I used to stand in the back and and watch how the crowd reacts because if they fucking howl then I knew all right we got we got a show here you know <laughs> there's people but one time if like Maddie spins out <laughs> and one guy goes oh! <laughs> and just quiet. This poor guy, he's up the front, he thought everybody else. It was cool to see, like, a guy who just didn't give a fuck. He got it, he thought it was fucking hilarious, and he's just slapping his knee and there's a fucking middle class murmur behind him, like, oh my god, oh my god, and he can't stop himself, and, you know, that way that, like, if you're laughing and no one else is laughing, it's funnier. <laughs> it's funnier, too. <laughs> and he just in the fucking... He just sort of dies down and the guy in the back goes, What's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> it's the start of a comedy show. <laughs> I know. I know. And I got up and I was like, uh, Hey, you might have... You might have thought... That joke was, uh, first of all, I think he saw that for what it was. Uh, it wasn't a joke about Madeline McCann so much as the media saturation of, uh, you know, how much we've had to look at her face and how much it's just been fucking selling, selling uh, advertising, you know. Like, we don't have, nobody doesn't know what she looks like. Uh, and for those of you who were offended by it, just remember, we've bought every urge to put a mustache on her. <laughs> you know the kidnappers have tried that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know she's wearing an eye patch somewhere. <laughs> Wherever she is, she's yeah. dressed like a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <man. laughs> she had that thing in her eye. She yeah. Was, Permanently walking around with a telescope. <laughs> Look over there! <laughs> Look over there, Juanita! <laughs> they always take her to play like far away. What the fuck's that kid looking at? This is a car park. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they 
always take her about a mile away from really interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going near the Guggenheim. <laughs> Uh, um, but I, you know, in that summer I did have a couple of people come up after the show and just, just really try and, uh, like, you know, they, they, you know, fucking almost Dale Carnegie, like, like, uh, come up and, uh, go, hey, that was just one hell of a show. You're, 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 you're good. You're, you're just smart and funny. And here's the thing though. Can't make jokes about Maddie, man. <laughs> That's the one thing I'd say, you know? And I know you didn't ask me, and I don't have to tell you, but, uh, buddy, no no Maddie jokes. And uh, I would always say, uh, just look him straight in the eye and go, how did you die? And uh, they're like, what? How did she die? Is she dead? And if so, how did she die? Well, nobody knows. So shut the fuck up! You know? She could have got out of her bed, she just saw a butterfly, got out of her bed, chased it down to the sea, washed into the sea, a second suffering and uh, not not beautiful, but uh, just innocence and then it's lost and then it's gone, but nothing horrible's happened. It's when people go, you can't joke about it because the awful thing that obviously happened, like, What's wrong with you? Every time a child goes missing, oh, well, I would have fucked it to death. <laughs> if that's what had happened. If a child's gone, somebody fucked it to death. <laughs> uh, we've had a lovely cycle. We've had a lovely cycle. We had a chilling thing where we went through a town and it, what seemed to be initially an empty town uh, and a fucking bell started clanging. Yeah. Really <laughs> and then a the fucking bell us. Yeah, there was a statue of Jesus with his hands out almost as if he was on the decks and then like, like was scratching a few records and then like raised them <laughs> so everybody could be hey so I pulled over and I was like Jesus what what and then I boom 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 how I knew in my heart that it was five o'clock <laughs> show you how fucking on top of everybody religion used to be that that could be their advertising I will get a sinister clanging noise. <laughs> I'll bring him rolling in. <laughs> Nothing upbeat. I can get a flute or no. <laughs> Something people associate with doom. Yeah. yeah, that's my least favorite commercial. Um, there's monks and a bell, and um, then they play jump, jump. That's pretty bad. And yeah, all the monks are being whipped in the air by the ropes attached to the bells. And, uh, or, or jump around, not jump, jump. Um, that guy's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know at his funeral, one of the guys from Criss Cross? Do you know what happened? No. His manager and many of his friends out of respect for their pants backwards. <laughs> Not really. Not really? Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's something he did like once fucking 20 years ago. It's like fucking Joe Pesky burgling fucking Macaulay Culkin's funeral. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm pathologically fucking averse to advertisement. It's that thing where people go, the adverts are better than the shows now and stuff, and you're like, oh, what, what way round did you think this was? <laughs> you think you think they were there to sell you good programming? <laughs> the, well, the more important thing looks better. Okay. <laughs> the great insight. Yeah. It's getting weirder and weirder with ads now, you know? It's just uh, where they're popping up, and uh, I read a hockey website that's just rumors about what might happen. Uh, but they, uh, you can write comments, and sometimes people, and uh, 
one guy wrote a comment uh, going, I can't believe your website advertises pornographic materials. Uh, you know, my kids read this. You guys are sick. <laughs> and somebody commented under him was, uh, uh, the website uses cookies, so whatever you've been browsing, it reads that and advertises to your specific tastes. Why do they keep advertising a webcam of three women in a basement in Ohio? <laughs> it's fucking sick. Gaffer tape? I don't need tape. <laughs> Is that a thing fucking... Um, <coughs> what are the Redskins? Are they... They're a football. A football American team? football. But they're still called that. They're, just, like, they're still called <laughs> They're still called it. And I believe the most valuable franchise. Well... So, you know, you can't, you can't argue with success. <laughs> I had that discussion with a First Nations friend of mine. Um, it wasn't about the Redskins, it was about the Braves. Um, and uh, he said that the problem he had with it is that um, Native, uh, Native Americans didn't own that team. Right. You know, and I said, well, you know, the Minnesota Vikings aren't owned by Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> Although the Dolphins. <laughs> I looked into this. Yeah. yeah. There is a lot of money in letting retards swim with you. <laughs> Once they got their wallet open, you can pretty much peck out whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's led to all the rapes. I just think they're so fucking high on drugs. <laughs> yeah, look at that. I got two. I got two right in there. I got retards and rape in there. <laughs> a, Guess, do a dolphin rape and a retard. <laughs> it was about American football and then... Yeah, Maddie's watching from her telescope, <laughs> dressed like a pirate. And who's this? <laughs> Little Richard Burton! <laughs> ah, that blue hole looks very inviting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Maddie's wearing Hitler's brain like a hat. Isn't that the cutest thing you. Uh oh! Oh, it's taking over! <laughs> oh, it's Little Maddie McHitler! I hit her by her dad. <laughs> Ella's brain takes over her body and like a moustache forms on her face and it, you realise that you had actually been right all along <laughs> the fucking dolphin looks up at you and goes I am M. Night Shyamalan think about it you've never seen a photo of me have you? <laughs> that's because I'm a dolphin <laughs> yeah well it's all there <laughs> The balls, the balls in your court, Pixar. <laughs> I'm the ideas man. I'm the ideas man. Shh. He's just he's sloshing around in that water. He's so it's excited. A, it's a smoothie. It's a, a very angry smoothie. Yeah. I was thinking last time I was on acid. Maybe we're not supposed to do this, right? In any fucking great. To any great extent. And, that, you know, that whole idea of shamanism. Maybe shamans were just people who really fucking like drugs. <laughs> you know, you're just like, <laughs> nobody's really supposed to be in that fucking altered state terribly much. Well, uh, and I think to shamans, uh, it, I don't think it was every night. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I think they, uh, you know, might have had the pig festival once a year and uh, then uh, got... Uh, got a little out of their gourd, and, and, but that's why they, they do it, because they could, you know, clearly think, but, you know, it's acting like there's, like, some sort of shaman bar where they're all creeping into the can to do peyote and coming <laughs> back out, rubbing at their nostril, just like, that's, uh, what, what'd you cut that with? This, uh, I'm not getting anything off that peyote, man. I mean, that, that coyote is whispering, but I can't <laughs> hear it talking. <laughs> Fuck, it stepped all over the peyote again. <laughs> Why the fuck is this shit? My spirit animal is me? Are you kidding me? It's me in a fucking fox mask. Yeah. No, it was, uh, 
It's just some kid dressed up like a stork. <laughs> you try to pass off this bunk as peyote. These fucking visions are quite obviously your friends <laughs> in animal costumes. Look, if you don't got peyote, don't tell me you got peyote. I want my money back. Doing comedy, you can see why the fucking shaman's lived at the edge of town. Decided <laughs> like, to commune with nature and also make a quick getaway. And it's like, you don't like what you hear, okay? <laughs> it's gonna be on the edge of town while you process this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking sitting in a catapult in the edge of town, <laughs> aimed at the forest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thought of a few jokes. You yeah, made yeah. them get back yeah. to me. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who missed the opportunity to um, to have some outlet for their fucking shamanism, and uh, I think that's what gay people are. I think, like, I don't really, I don't know. What the fuck <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you like get gay. Because <laughs> yeah. if I, it, <laughs> oh god, that would have been over right there. You. You, let me see, Frankie. Your, your your idea is that gay people need to talk more. <laughs> no, I would have cut it over to Frankie went on about this for about an hour. I don't feel like any of it was worth <laughs> worth playing. <laughs> he doesn't like Vietnamese people either. <laughs> that came up an hour too. <laughs> That'd be good, man. Have a really specific racism. I think actually. To get rid of racist stereotypes, they should just have like one guy that we all get to do racist jokes about. So it's just like fucking Dave Sones. We pick someone, they're well paid for it. But yeah. It's all just like oh, Dave's fucking sleeps 18 to a room and he's on a fucking jab jar. <laughs> <laughs> just his normal clothes. Oh, this is degrading. I once tried to do that because uh, I lived with uh, Ed Bird for a very long time. We were we were young men, drank a lot of liquor together, and in those days it was funny to pretend your friend was gay. You know, you'd always slam him like, "Where were you? Second cock last night?" Ha 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 ha! Yeah, we were really funny around the turn of two thousand. That's about all we are, we're getting up to. I mean, that was the joke. And if that's the joke, that's not that bad of a joke, you know, that somebody's keeping a secret and then, you know. Um, but gay people don't like it when they hear it, you know. <laughs> like, like, you can defend it all you want, but they catch you calling your friend a fag. They're not into it, you know. Uh, so I tried to... Um, I tried to make the punchline that Ed was secretly an alligator. <laughs> and then every time he'd like show up late like where were you sucking a yak down in the, <laughs> down in the water hole didn't work <laughs> it's, it's <not> funny. <laughs> yeah. fucking royal babies Jew probably fucking crawling out of a fucking talking pond at Balmoral <laughs> speaking in maths for two weeks the first two weeks would be the fucking baby from Family Guy. <laughs> 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 ah! <laughs> yeah. I think it's a spiritual crossroads, the fucking moment of birth. I think anyone can jump in there. Prince Philip, Mandela, anyone's soul can occupy the fucking body. Uh, and that's why everyone's just gearing up to die about now. This is the real reason for my hunger strike as well. We're all just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> guessing at the due date and fucking... Chanting every night in a fucking chalk circle. Man. There was a thing when the fucking nurse killed herself. Remember that? Oh, yeah. I'm like, this is exactly the plot of The Omen, as no one else knows. <laughs> <laughs> nurse kill herself. The fucking press conference when it's born is taken by like a Rottweiler. <laughs> Why else do we need to talk in Rottweiler? Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty good, yeah. <laughs> 
I got a German accent. I got raised by Dobermans. It's a long story. But anyway, not here to talk about me. <laughs> Why is that Rottweiler have a human brain on its head? <laughs> Is that a dolphin filming this? <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's something that hasn't been covered about um, all of these uh, internet. Uh, you know, I was bullied, and then they committed suicide, and all that. Nobody's really come out and say that's not how you react to that. <laughs> that's yeah. not that's not the right way. You know, oh, you got embarrassed at work. I'll kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You say Billy, I say evolutionary force. <laughs> I, I reckon Prince Harry just fucking bucks his fucking load into a fucking haunted mirror every night, man. And just <laughs> flies into some other dimension. <laughs> just fucking screams at him. It's not even a fucking evil mirror. It's like the fucking Snow White mirror. It's just fucking... It's just, it's just a magic mirror. Just because just it's magic doesn't mean it's evil. Throw the fairest up again. Yeah. <laughs> now enlarge your mouth. Ray! <laughs> your highness! I always knew he would turn out to be the best one. Yep. Even when he was a little kid, I was like, "That kid, he's got it. Rest of them are <laughs> fucking freaks, but the little one, he knows what's going on. Because I, I don't even think he's of that family, really. That's Billy like King Ralph or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I had something there. I remember uh, I was just in Liverpool and um, I was with Jojo Smith and we uh, walked to a back of the hotel but we walked by Blue Comedy Blue yeah, and I remember. Smug Roberts was there and I hadn't seen Smug in years and uh, so I ended up getting really drunk and uh, then I went back to the hotel room I got kind of drunk I went back to the hotel room I'd had a bottle of wine that I'd purchased the night before and hadn't drank, so I thought, well, I'll have one little little glass to send me off to sleep. That's not that's not what happened, Frank. <laughs> I had a bottle of red wine on my own. I ended up I was I had my eye touch in my ears and I was singing Hair of the Dog by uh Nazareth <laughs> and I see myself in the mirror so I started like dancing in the mirror too. and then I had like my little hands as puppets uh, singing along and then I had a fucking brainwave for Edinburgh so I, I call up Toby Jones whose gig I'm doing on Sunday I go I need puppets <laughs> the dude in 12 hours sourced 10 puppets I don't know where he spends his time but he can get his hands on 10 puppets in 12 hours. So now, I'll show it to you later. I've got my Edinburgh opening clip to play. It's just me fucking around with all these puppets. And uh, so that's what I'm saying, kids. Sometimes drinking alone helps you right. It's the thing with comedy, though. It's just so difficult to tell when you're having a breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might be veering towards character comedy, or uh, I have a hysterical personality disorder. <laughs> Either way, I'm buying the wig. <laughs> and some heels. They're not in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of these comedy characters have just been things people have been caught in. What? No. <laughs> yeah. You're not a show. Transvestite alligator, it. Okay. <laughs> That's a thing me and Glenn used to do. Uh, Glenn will back it up. He'll back it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were doing stage and he still got his Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the funny thing about comics is um, most people's actions are neutralizing, but then when we get back on stage, it's... Um, 
you know, it'll, it'll draw back, especially if they've been in the uh, London uh, circuit or, you know, but yeah, I'm back on the stage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I just find it's partly because your voice has got to be deeper. You know what I mean? So like in those rooms, particularly if you're fucking touring, which aren't built for anyone to fucking do amplified speech, that you, you can't have a light, fruity voice like me. Because <laughs> they, they can shout over the edge. Yeah. So you've got to be... <laughs> Because I've just got my uh, show worked up for Edinburgh. I've still got a couple of tweaks, but it's funny when you listen to it from when you uh, when you start, you put it all together. Now you've done some of the material before, but uh, a lot of it's just stuff you knew you wanted to do, and now you have to work it out. And when you listen back to some of the first drafts of the show <laughs> on your your recording device, it's just like. Like the jokes are there, but you're just swearing at a like nineteen eighties cop movie rate. <laughs> <laughs> you're just yeah. listening, like, was this written by a longshoreman? Why am I swearing so much in this? Fear. Yeah, loud and swearing. You know? <laughs> if you if you fucking just like were able to hear it at sort of half volume, so you couldn't quite make out the words most new stand-up sounds like someone pleading for their life <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> let him go <laughs> so much of it is that even the fucking thing where they're standing against brick walls and improv it's like they've cornered someone in an alley and he's fucking pacing yeah. guys listen listen guys nobody leaves here without singing the blues <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever notice <laughs> yeah <sighs> yeah, they should really hand over their wallets at the end of those sets. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, can I keep the cards? It's just a hassle. <laughs> and then Edinburgh came along, and it literally is that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost another uh, four hundred pounds. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> a good one there. <laughs> that's gonna work 